Hey, uh, welcome to reallibertymedia.com. I'm Vince Neasley. I'm here on Real Liberty Media Radio. You can find it with a dot .xyz on the end. Today, I'm um, talking about Bundy case. It's going back to court. I'm calling it the tortoise and the hare hoof and hide the truth. It's a state. It's the mistrial and dismissal and appeal from the Bundy et al. dismissal with prejudice from Judge Gloria Navarro two years ago today. She uh, she called a mistrial. January 8th, she, uh, she dismissed it with prejudice. Well, the government's come along with an appeal. And this uh, I, I read to air for the record last night the uh, government's rep- reply brief. And uh, so today, that and more, that's right now on reallibertymedia.com. And so what matters upon our gander, and I'm your host. And today, well, I, I, I really debated on the last part of this whether I'd include it or not, but I, I really think I did. I included it in the RLM data uh, database for quotes. And this is a modest proposal, I say, waving the flag and a message to tyranny. Well, you say you love me, but you never listen. Go uck yourself. It's kind of serious words in so many ways, I reckon. But where are we at? Well, we're even worse off than where we started, I reckon, as far as what's going on. I'm going to skip this ahead right here. I want to read this from Roger Roots. And we'll come to it in the blog. But he says, My client is Liberty. It's every lawyer's duty to, cha- to challenge the Leviathan of unchecked powers claimed as governmental authority. Roger Roots. I'm going to go back to that. Uh, let me go make sure I got this correct. I'm going to preview it. I've got uh, the blog, the radio log, mostly built. And I have some few extra buttons to push along the way. So as this is uh, updating here, I'm going to pick that up. Uh, let me say uh, I'm over here in the Real Liberty chat. There's some folks tuned in here and, <laughs> and chatting. And Judge Dredd Hansel himself wants to know if I, if Santa Claus is really Jesus, well, go ask your grandma, son. I, I don't want to suppo- uh, spoil any surprises for you. Don't want to kick your legs out from under you and just help you get them under you and get you on your way. <laughs> All right, I think this is working now over here. Uh, <clears throat> sure enough. Well, the, the the radio log here, it's going to be titled uh, Bundy Case Going Back to Court. And I've got some some few uh, subtitles in here. And I'm just going to read these that I've got laid out here. Yes, it is the state. It's mistrial, dismissal, and appeal. Bundy et al. Dismissal with prejudice. Government's reply brief. The tortoise and the hare. Hoof and hide the truth. Now I'm going to say what this old cowboy said. And uh, I I lost the quote. But I I think I found it. And I'm going to have to add his name in here somewhere. But he says. You are what you do. Not what you'll say you'll do. So. Come to the media and take back your future. Journalism. That is truth. It needs defense. Be the media. What Matters of Ponder Gander. This is a radio writing series that I'm doing right here at reallibertymedia.com. You can find me in a lot of places. It's the uh, RLM Radio R-Log. Today I've got this, what I said here, a modest proposal. Waving the flag. And we'll get, uh, we'll get to that message to Tierney. At, uh, maybe think about that a little bit more. You say you love me, but you never listen. This picture right here is from a friend of mine. I've met, uh, come to know through Jason Patrick. He's a friend of his. And uh, when I got to know Jason out there in uh, Buckerville in 2014, he says, you know, you remind me a lot of a, uh, a lot of a good friend of his, he says to me, and, and uh, that is this man here, Daniel Lewis Crumpton. Uh, he and I have done a lot of radio together. I introduced him to Chuck O'Chelly, and um, there was a lot of projects they've done together. I uh, hope this man in high regard. He wrote a book. It's excellent. It's called uh, Before the Flood. Uh, I'll have to find that link and put it in here. I'm going to read you what he wrote. He says, uh, regardless of politics or ideological le- leanings to left, right, or wherever, the side of the flag stirs. Wait just a minute. I'm going to do this justice because I've got it so small for the uh, 
the thing there, the print in the publication. But I'm going to blow it up and I'm going to start again so I can see it better, to read it better. Might have cut rubbed my glasses too. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> here we go. We'll start it from the beginning. Regardless of politics or ideological uh, leanings to left or right or wherever, the sight of the flag still stirs something up within me. Whenever I see it fluttering in the wind, I don't see a symbol of government. I don't see a symbol of party affiliation. And I don't see a symbol of this conspiracy theory or that, regardless of how true some may be or not. For me, when I see this flag, I see a symbol of we the people. We the individuals. We the multitude endowed by our Creator with unalienable rights. I see a symbol of the greatest of things in the face of tyranny. I'm going to say that again. I see a symbol of the greatest of things in the face of tyranny. Be it by government, the majority, or any other form of tyranny that it might take, I see a symbol of hope. It's a hope that all men are entitled to and can attain freedom. Now, symbols are not constants. Uh, they always change. They can be, do, be reduced to what they once were, what they meant. Uh, be reduced to zero. Symbols are what we make them. Would to God we once again stopped. The next time we saw a flag and pondered in our hearts what freedom means for ourselves and our fellow man and then proceed to conduct ourselves in a very re, re, and conduct ourselves in a way respecting of such a hope from Daniel Lewis Crampton he, he uh, tagged me and Ammon Bundy and several others uh, December the 9th 2019 you know Hal Anthony was uh, from behind the woodshed was talking uh, about the postman uh, in uh, his uh, broadcast here a week or so back or two. Talking about that, and I've, I listened, this is about one of the first uh, audio books I reckon I, I listened to some, maybe a couple of decades back. It's the postman. Y'all know the movie maybe that Kevin Costner was in. It says here, this is the description from a uh, um, uh, Good, good Google or something. Uh, I'll have to open it to see. It says, though, fate teaches him one chill winter's day when he bars the jacket of a long dead postal worker to protect himself from the cold. The old worn uniform, the old worn uniform, still has its power. Still has power as a symbol of hope. And with it begins to weave his greatest tale. Of a nation on the road to recovery, we're in a we're really in a in a nation of uh, that's been been torn down for a long time, and uh, I don't find any uh, any hope to, from party so either side are good. Good reads is where that comes from. Come, comes from there. Uh, it'll be in the the radio log, clickable there for, on the postman by uh, David Brin. And let me go see. Somebody said something to me over here in the, in the network chat. And what did it be? Oh, here it is. Hello, Wanataco. You said this picture here is. Uh, what picture and where? Okay. Well, it'll be in the broadcaster. Let me see if uh, let me see if I can grab it for you. And uh, and just right now, actually, and pull it up where you can. Uh, I'll post it over there. This is from Jason Patrick. Let me see if I can do that from here. Open image, uh, new tab. Let me copy and paste. Okay, I'll bring that to you. Thanks for asking. Over in Politics 360. And I'll bring it to you, Mr. Taco. And I'll bring it to the Real Liberty Media chat room as well. It's a ray of hope and sunshine so many ways. I've got a great picture that uh, I took up on, the, on top of the hill. Dirt the flag. Way up on top of the hill overlooking the, the Virgin River. Down there, Riverside, Nevada. Alrighty. There's that. Let me come back in where. 
on that. And scroll down. <clears throat> okay, so I read from Jason Patrick and uh, told you about that movie, the book, The Postman. <clears throat> Let me tell you what we're uh, where we're at today. Well, two years ago today, that is, uh, and I say tomorrow in here because I was working on it yesterday, so I'll have to edit that. Well, two years o uh, years ago uh, today, Judge Gloria Navarro tossed the federal case against the Bundys and a few others. She later dismisses it completely with prejudice, and the state says, no fair. <laughs> For real. Well, later on, we come to see here uh, after that it does get tossed and dismissed with prejudice, meaning no no retrial, uh, from uh, Sherry Duvalli and uh, Readout News. It's overcoming tyranny and oppression in America. And there's my first and one and only ever uh, photo credit published as Clive and Bundy with his button on there not guilty. And I'll, I'll listen at the end of the broadcast. You can, I'll, I'll bring you the, the link here after I uh, get everything finished up and you can you can see and read along here. And if you're at YouTube, first of all, uh, let me ask you to stop. Go up there and I think if you look in the description there, hopefully there'll be a, a, a link over to, to uh, BitChute. And that's where you need to be listening, is bit shoot. Because you know what, YouTube, tell them to get bitten. Yeah, take yourself over there. But for sure down there, there's a link back to this radio log. You'll be hearing the postcast. Uh, and you can come back over here to the Real Liberty Media site and, and follow that out here to see pictures and links and logs and all that sort of thing. Well, yes, two years ago, a little slice of, uh, a little slice of justice got served up in Las Vegas. And this is uh, embedded from Facebook, and that got hashtag wit in standing in the gap with Mr. and Mrs. Bundy. It's uh, a picture there from Readout News in the link to the article. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll grab it and bring it to you here in just a second. And it's got Shauna Cox, Hammond Bundy, Jeanette Finnecum, Morgan Philpot, and I include in that uh, the tagging Ryan and Angie Bundy, uh, Ryan and Errol Payne. In the Bundy Ranch at all, that means uh, all you that uh, were there physically or, or uh, at least in heart even. And I do give this special uh, appreciation for Best in Press, the coverage from the other than the mainstream media, uh, the MSM, I say. And I left out calling it what it really is, CLAP. That's what we call it here at Real Liberty Media, the CLAP, uh, the corporate lame-ass propaganda. So a special thanks and a shout-out to Readout News. Sherry Diwali and Doug Knowles over it. It matters how you stand. And there, let me grab this link and just. Oh, it went to Facebook, of course. You know, click it again. Just so you'll have this right here. If you'd like to open up, a, well, I'm reading some more, and you can peruse this here. This is the. Uh, if you'll let me click here. There we go. And copy. <clears throat> this, yep, mistrial. This is from uh, December the 20th, two years ago. Mistrial declared in Bunkerville standoff trial from uh, uh, Readout News. Here I come. The, the flag in the picture flash. And here we go. The politics 360. All right. Let me go back then now. To the radio log, and uh, that I was there with them uh, that day. Everybody and a bunch of others. It's uh, not mentioned here, and uh, we went out to Henderson to where was that place? Uh, uh, I forget the name of it. Some little bar and grill type thing, you know, for a sports bar, whatever. Where you go eat and uh, get loud. <laughs> right, here I come back to this quote I started out with uh, earlier, and that is. My client is liberty. It's every lawyer's duty to challenge the Leviathan of unchecked powers claimed as governmental authority. Roger Root says that. And here, that day, two years ago today, <clears throat> I, I take a look back with Roger Root's. The mistrial and dismissal, what are the differences? And I have read uh, here, written... <laughs> Judge Gloria Navarro declared a mistrial in this latest round, the third attempt at a conviction 
failing again in the Nevada Federal Courthouse Wednesday, December 20, 2017. Ryan Bundy is arguably a leading force in this cohesive determination for justice, along with the unrivaled efforts from lawyers, legal aides, and the great many hands of diligence leading, lending in behind the scenes. I was proud to be amongst them. Shackled, contempt and cover-up lies and suppression of evidence, hidden and sealed documents and behind closed doors, secret court proceedings have bound the truth from being presented in these last two years. Misconduct by the prosecution, FBI, BLM, and Brady and Brady and, and Giglio violation in discovery obligations may only pale in comparison to the misconduct, civil and criminal acts, and vicious prosecution by the state. <clears throat> now, last night I read their brief, and and it's all I could do to not comment all the way through and, and bite my tongue, but I couldn't do it. Uh, I was in in there for the evidentiary hearings and the sculptatory and the items discussed. The state acted like the defendants were nuts, crazy, nothing like that happened. They're fishing. And I'm like, I was there in 2014. I know what happened. And they're like saying that this didn't happen. And then they come along and they're brief. Oh, well, uh, you know, it was, it, it wasn't that bad, right? We should... We should just be able to try them again. Mistrial, mistrial, retrial. They keep coming and coming and coming and coming. Well, January the 8th, we'll hear motions. We heard motions from the defense team to dismiss charges with prejudice. If not resolved at that time, it would have went to court, been set to the 26th of February uh, on the docket and, uh, and would have convened in a new case. In the courtroom... In the courtroom, uh, we'll see that I think I've got a typo there. We'll, in the courtroom, we'll see the defense: Clive Bundy, Ryan Bundy, Amon Bundy, Ryan Payne, Bob Whipple, Brenda Wexley, Wex, Wexley, Dan Hill, Roger Roots, Larry Clayman, Maysor Fletcher, Morgan Philpot, and Rick Corber. Rick Rick's in prison now for uh, several several years now. It took him ten years, and uh, I think four or five. Odd tries, they kept coming and coming and coming. He'd beat it, be dismissed, uh, beat appeal, or overturned, or appeals upheld, and what? And they come again and again, and they got them. So I'm going to come to a, po a post here from uh, um, Angie Bundy, and I want to send some words out to y'all, and uh, it's not safe. Yet they're still coming for you. In the meantime, I'm gonna pose up here a minute. I want you to listen to Roger. And, and matter of fact, uh, uh, I sent Roger a inbox. I told him. Uh, well, let me tell you what I told him. He's a uh, good man. I'm glad to know him. Uh, Roger, I sent him a heads up that I've got this video of him and how, uh, here. I said thanks, brother. Keep the fight. Keeping the fight. That's right. And a Bundy. Ranch. I'm going to open it from here since I'm there. Let you have it, and I'll be back in four minutes. Go. All right, yeah. Um, there's a little bit of confusion about the difference between a mistrial and dismissal. The judge today, Navarro, found grounds for a mistrial. Mistrial can mean that the indictment still exists, okay? The indictment hasn't gone away, and she did set new trial dates for potentially another trial. So they could potentially retry the same group with the same indictment. Dismissal means end of the indictment, okay? And without prejudice would mean they can go and bring up a new indictment. With prejudice means that it's over. They can't, under, under double jeopardy grounds, uh, they can't really bring up a new uh, indictment at all. In fact, the, the, when double jeopardy attaches is when the jury is sworn in. The jury was sworn in. So double jeopardy would attach at this point, meaning that if the judge finds on, well, the, we're, we're, all the lawyers are going to respond by uh, January 28th with briefs about whether or not this case should be dismissed with or without prejudice. 
Obviously, the defense will argue with prejudice that it's so willful, the violations, the Brady violations were so willful by the prosecution that it was really on the, pr the prosecution's fault for the mistrial, which means it will be with prejudice, and that will not, not just be a mistrial with prejudice, that would be, in my opinion, a dismissal of the case, and that would be with prejudice because the jury was sworn. So in the middle of a jury trial, there were these violations, the jury was sworn in, and the Fifth Amendment double jeopardy clause requires that no person shall be twice put in jeopardy, meaning that the case will be over if the judge declares uh, dismissal with prejudice. How that, will that affect the, uh, the next round and the previous round trials? Uh, you know, the next group of guys, the so-called Tier 2 group, they're free as far as I'm concerned. Uh, they're free on several arguments. Number one, speedy trial argument. They've been demanding speedy trial, you know, for almost a, almost two years. They could get out. They could get the whole thing dismissed with re with regard to themselves on speedy trial grounds. In addition to these Brady trial, these Brady violations. But in my opinion, the group that's in that next group of men to be tried are free, completely free. And the previous guys. These current set of guys are still, remember Cliven's still in custody yeah, right now, yeah. still locked up. Uh, they still are f facing at least potential or, or conceptual uh, retrial in February. But, you know, we're obviously going to push and uh, we're, we're going to, uh, the lawyers are going to argue that it should be dismissed with prejudice and it should be over completely. Good. Thanks, Roger. Uh, founder of Lysander University, Roger Roots, and... Uh, quite a long list. You have a PhD. You're a, a lawyer and lawyer and a doctor. And a doctor. <laughs> and uh, your highest duty is, and I quoted you a little bit in, in uh, short at all. Liberty. My client is Liberty. That's right. And your highest duty is to challenge governmental authority gone bad. Uh, so the love, the, the Leviathan. That's every lawyer's highest duty. Yeah. Thanks, Roger. Thanks, Roger. Thanks, Linda. Okay, did I get close to the chat? Okay. Yes, I did. We have a lot of, lot of, lot of fun folks out there. And stand in the gap again. It's a trial. Okay, cut. Cut. <laughs> okay, thank you. Let me come back over here in the Politics 360 chat room. It says, uh, Juan and Taco, there were so many Brady violations, they called them the Brady Bunch. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. That's, uh, that's pretty funny. Yeah, it really is. If it wasn't so sad in so many ways. Now then, let me come back over here. That was... Oh, and I've got the uh, I've got the uh, uh, thumbnail there on the video there on YouTube. Um, that that's from uh, uh, Stuart Freshwater. He was a he was a court uh, artist in there, a sketch a real one, not like that other feller with the stick figures. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, and I got famous doing it though. What's his name? Bundy sketch artist they call him, but this is the real one. Stuart Freshwater, really a nice man and an incredible artist. Uh, you can find him in a search engine. Somebody might do that. I, I should have done it already, thinking about it. Now, I'm coming down here to a post, whatever it takes. And uh, here's Ryan Payne, and here's some other photos of a bunch of fine people. Am and uh, Bundy and his wife, Lisa, and family. There's uh, Miss Carol and Cliven. Uh, and they're also is uh, Ryan and Angie and Buddy and all their little children right there. Nice family. I, I, I'm telling you, I, I meant to start out this broadcast to telling you who I am, but I, I guess maybe since I've gone this far, I'll just keep going and tell you later. Well, yeah, there's uh, this post from Angie, and I want to read you what she says in it. Because I sent, uh, I, I was one of the ones sending out some of these messages, and I, I got it, I tracked it back to uh, uh, I, one of the people, the anti-Bundys, that uh, I keep in contact with over on Twitter, 
and uh, then that track back to uh, JJ McNabb. Donna, Donna has experience with this gal. She has a funny name for her. But anyways, uh, from there and then to the documents, uh, and that this will be coming to Las Vegas in uh, March, the week of 23rd to 27th. It's when the uh, the court's going to be the, the court of appeals will be setting in Vegas. There, did, yeah, traveling circus. Uh, Neil Wampler. <laughs> I'll have to come back over to to Facebook before we get done here, and I'll I'll talk and address some of these questions here from you, sir. Neil Wampler. <clears throat> I got video on him uh, uh, at the Lysander University meeting there that we had behind the courthouse, and a lot of more video in the uh, Bundy Ranch standoff playlist at Real Liberty Media on uh, YouTube. And uh, also some of this stuff is uh, carried over to the to the uh, BitChute channel. Uh, I'm not sure the compl uh, com how many of them are. That's something I'm going to have to look at because that's where we want to be at is BitChute. Uh, YouTube is just getting, you know, that step by step. Slowly they turned into the creepy thing that they've become. Full of control and censor and, you know, no free, free uh, speech with them. All right, let me tell you what... Uh, <clears throat> Angie wrote out here. Um, and again, I guess I'll say, yeah, I just wanted to send out a lot of these messages to some of these folks, too. Uh, uh, and I'd been waiting for some responses and to let some of this come to air. So I didn't like, you know, I'm not like trying to break some story. This is uh, from November the 8th is when the, uh, the, the uh, state filed their paperwork. So we'll come to that here in a bit. She says that Ryan I and I have been getting many messages about the fact that the government is working on trying to reopen her case. This is to hopefully dispel some rumors and at least let you know what we know. The government filed an appeal to the Ninth Circuit that challenges Judge Navarro's decision to dismiss our case with prejudice. When a case is dismissed with prejudice, it cannot be retried again. The government is hoping to overturn the finality of that decision so that they can take evidence back to a grand jury. Uh, then they'd like to uh, reindict Clive and Ryan, uh, Ryan, Ammon, and Ryan Payne. So this hearing that is coming up in March is to argue Judge Navarro's ruling before the Ninth Circuit uh, uh, back in uh, uh, January of 2018. <coughs> She goes on to say, now, if they uh, successfully get it overturned, the men could be re-indicted. She says, I'm not sure how many of you were there in the courtroom, I was there, when this case was dismissed. The room was packed and her words and language were strong as to the irresponsibility of the prosecutors and how they mishandled our case. The fact is, the grand jury was lied to. And as many of the facts that got the men indicted to begin with, the lies were exposed in the first few weeks of evidentiary hearings, jury selection, and trial. Facts about our men and their nonviolent nature were, were withheld from, uh, from the evidence they turned over. Facts about cameras being ta uh, trained on the ranch home, along with facts about there being snipers and surveillance on the family and homes, were not only withheld, but openly mocked. Yes, openly mocked. Scott, you ought to have seen that man, Myrie. What a dirty, dirty person. Openly mocked. When they, when they were inquired about by my husband, she says. When Ryan Payne called for the, for, uh, when Ryan Payne called for prosecution from, uh, militia. Oh, I'm sorry. Try that again. Uh, when Ryan Payne called for, pr for protection from militia, it was because snipers were trained on the protesters and family. They were. They were denied it. But it was factually true. They denied it, but it was factually true. All of that came came out of the court proceedings with, along with a ton of secrets. I, I mean, they, she was barring the door uh, left and right up in there. Secret he hearings, sealed indictments, uh, all of this. That uh, they don't want the people to know. Why? Why? Why don't they? Ask yourself, why do they, why should not all, every bit of information be examined fully and not be in respect to some legalese of the Bar Association? 
He's been uh, very lucky, blessed, and perhaps the hand of providence had a great deal to do with delivering them out of bondage, I say. Let me go back here. I'm going to reread that part. When Ryan Payne called for protection from militia, it was because snipers were trained on the protesters and family. They denied it, but it was factually true. All that came out in the court proceedings, along with a ton of secrets, that we would all get killed. I mean, sorry, I'm sorry. Since that uh, we could all get kicked out of the courtroom. Yeah, Navarro threatened left and right. Boy, don't you dare. Not even a look. I mean... Not don't just not say nothing. Don't get some look that she's going to determine. Uh, yeah, you're out. Boom, boom, boom. Ah, uh, to reopen our case is a long shot. Angie says, but our, ju our judicial system is corrupt. However, Judge Navarro is a Harry Reid appointee. She is in no way our friend, but her tongue lashing to the prosecutors was strong. And she says that she has serious doubts her decision could be overturned. So am I worried? No. However, we still have Greg, Todd, and Jerry are still incarcerated uh, over the lies that were told to the jury and the grand jury. Could another trial help them? If it could, then it'd be worth it. The truth, the truth that already came out in our hearing should logically set up uh, set them free already. That's yeah, how they weren't. Uh, but it hasn't. So we watch and wait. God is still bigger, and He has helped us through all of this. My faith and trust in Him. Angie Huntington Bundy, 15 December. Now, <clears throat> I've been wondering, that, and I still got more to figure out about about all the how all this works. But I'm gonna be out there in Las Vegas, in that. Uh, the last make week of March for uh, to sit in there. Now I wasn't sure, and and uh, I've got this here to say, and this is to the max. I asked, uh, asked, <laughs> I asked, am I Southern? I asked Maxine Bernstein if she might tell me what to look for, and what to expect in the appeal of the Bundy, uh, the Bundy et al. Uh, dismissal next March. Uh, how long until the ninth gives its decision? And what happens if Navarro's ruling is overturned? <clears throat> and this during Christmas, you know, the holiday season. Thank you, Maxine. Uh, I appreciate. Uh, I'm going to tell you what I wrote here to her. I say thank you, Maxine. Let me tell you again how much I appreciate your work and for all the information you provide. Most especially for taking time to respond personally to my questions respectfully, Vincent. Uh, this is what she told me. She said there will be a date set for oral arguments sometime in March 2020 on that appeal <clears throat> on that appeal before the Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals. And, that's, uh, and then it's anyone's guess when the court would issue a ruling. Could take months. If Navarro's ruling is overturned, the government would be able to bring a new case. <clears throat> Excuse me. I want to say a few words about Maxine. Um, from the Oregonian, her uh, evolution of writing from uh, the early days into when I actually got to meet her and, and see her, who she was. But I was following her before, before then because she was putting all that pertinent information of the proceedings that take place inside the courtroom. I was talking to Lonnie Clark. I said, she's, oh, but she's a liberal. I said, I really like uh, Maxine Bernstein. I said, but she's a liberal. But, you know, I'm not uh, left or right. I see the both sides of it. And I, I take a lot of value from people in... Uh, uh, all aspects of uh, this uh, social parameters. Um, Maxine, I gave, after the dismissal, we are coming down in the elevator. I had a bunch of uh, other mainstream media personalities up in there. And I says, I give to you, Maxine, the best the in main, uh, for, for uh, coverage in mainstream media. And uh, it still holds true today. You know this woman, she might, I don't know, all kinds of uh, inquiry, but uh, she and I have been able to have discord, uh, not discord, discourse, uh, without discord, uh, these last couple of years. And uh, I and others there, we, we came and we took on this mantle of uh, being the media. And we came to hold mainstream media's feet to the fire. Uh, and as I had these uh, 
<coughs> these people, uh, Ken Ritter and uh, Dave Montero and uh, for the Times and uh, the AP and uh, all these big time writers. And I told Maxine, I says, uh, you get top award for uh, best in mainstream media, best coverage of uh, the facts going on in there. Uh, she can't. She as her writing progressed, uh, there was less and less reflection of her uh, um, uh, her values that uh, she would stand in. You know, it's standing towards the left in uh, the all, all these things. But there's more to it than this divide that people want to put. There's also where we we have a commonality, and uh, I, I'm really glad that Maxine is uh, is chosen to to stand above that. Uh, um, that that cry, a demand from me and so many others uh, of the mainstream, tell the truth because it gets so slanted. And the Bundy Ranch trial has really changed how history is presented because so many people came. There was so many, the courtroom too. There was too many people. I was a witness in that trial, number three hundred three. Too many people seen what was going on. Too many showed up in twenty fourteen. To that the government did not take that step, and they would have. If Ryan Payne, and he wasn't wrong, if he hadn't called out that for the people to come and stand in, in the gap as a buffer in between an armed agency, an army of, of, of governmental thugs coming to kill that family, don't think it wouldn't happen. It's happened plenty of times. Maxine again, uh, she bears up to having had her feet held to the fire. I think in so many ways, and um, thank you very much for being able to have correspondence with me. There's other people too, uh, Ryan Lentz, uh Cherry Roberts, Cherry Wilson. Now, countering the rhetoric, she stepped down from doing. She's minor media, like you know, I would claim for myself, but. Uh, we're able to talk, uh, and I think that's very important. And who they call a troll, uh, Sky Reef, the sheriff. He, he, I get a lot of information from him, the proceedings of everything and everybody of what's going on, and uh, so I'll have to uh, give appreciation to him as well. Now a lot of people get scared about uh, engaging with uh, people other than themselves and. Can't tell you how wrong that is to be that way. <laughs> now, last night, and it, you'll be able to listen to it here. You'll find a link where you can go back to the Ponder Gander podcast uh, player in here. Um, I've read the uh, 44 pages. This comes from seditionist.com. It's the Bundy Appeal 105.pdf. Uh, it is a Bundy et al. dismissal with prejudice government's reply, uh, reply brief. It is on appeal from the United States District Court for the District of Nevada in the United States Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit. A lot to uh, uh, how jurisdiction and all that stuff and who the judges are. Um, there's a lot of information here. And it might be a uh, where I'll probably want to maybe go into next week where i got more information on these how these judges. But I, I've got a little bit. I got a little bit of how this works. I'm still trying to figure it all out. And I'm going to come back over and talk to uh, Neil Wampler back on uh, the Facebook and some uh, some issues he have has uh, brought to bear. So I've got it here. Where you can listen to that is uh, uh, on the Real Liberty Media. You go up into the uh, um, podcast. Yep. Yeah, to the podcast portion. You can click and find a Ponder Gander there. Uh, the player. It's a podcast player. It's a record player. But not really. It's digital. Uh, but you can find that title. If this is way down the line, this right today is 12 20 2019. If you're listening along, that will get fueled up. So just go down. You can scroll down to find Bundy Ranch et al. United States Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit is a title from uh, 2019 11 22. That's December 20. Uh oh, <laughs> I've got the wrong date. Should be 19th. I'll go fix that. Uh huh. <laughs> wrong date. There's the image here in the uh, radio log. Also a link, and it is uh, uh, for the United States Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit 2020 Court Sessions. 
So, Neil, it uh, it travels around. It does. He called it. He says, "Now I see why it calls. It's called a traveling circus. <laughs> this this circuit's a circus, from town to town, seeking whom it may devour." In January, it's in Pasadena and San Francisco, and in February, Seattle, uh, Pasadena, Phoenix, Honolulu, San Francisco. In March, we come to Portland, Seattle, Pasadena. Phoenix, San Francisco, and for the week of March 23rd to the 27th, we have Las Vegas, Nevada, and uh, reckon and that's when all that's going to happen. Let's see, I don't, I've got a lot more to figure out on how that works. Um, I can tell you that the uh, the the uh, U.S. courts uh, there's a www.ca9.uscourts.gov forward slash media uh, you can find audio and video of proceedings. They do it live and they stream it. And it goes to YouTube. And that YouTube channel is uh, .com user forward slash ninth. That's nine, the number, T-H-C-I-R-C. <clears throat> now here's some extra that you can uh, take if you'll come back over here to the radio log, the blog page here in the, in the postcast. You'll find more at this, uh, the tortoise and the hare, hoof and hide the truth. I see that the measure of a man's power is the depth of his mercy. The emperor said that in a book from Christopher Moore. It's the, uh, it's a book in his first one in the series. It's, uh, Blood Sucking Fiends, and that one is the love story. But what we come to find here, uh, is more that you can come listen to. And in a video here that uh, that I filmed there. It's The Great Debate in Extreme Environmentalism. It's a video with Kieran Sucklin, the Center for Biological Diversity. Go see my uh, engagement with that man right there. Uh, and it's also on YouTube. No, wait a minute. You know what? I got the video on Facebook. And, and if you don't have Facebook, still click that. I got it backdoored in there where you can still watch Facebook if you don't have an account. And the other one is... Uh, it is... Uh, um, I got his address right there, and then there's another one that uh, Tom Lockavar Stewart and I, um, I, I had a, a guest spot in there on his broadcast, and so it is still, I think it's it, uh, called uh, RTR and RBN, Resurrect the Republican, uh, uh, Republican Broadcasting Network, and RLM Radio present the Tortoise Two Step. That's right, it's a stocking horse hustle. The Turtleman Troubadours per perform the same old song and dance routine of No Moo in 92 and Cattle Free in 93. That's right. A suckling pig dog and pony show false front production. Well, I say if you can't do great things, do small things in a great way. Standing in the gap. I'm right here. I'm continuing as witness. Me, Vincent Easley reporting. That was adapted, by the way. Now, I've got some news for you uh, you may not know. I was listening to Lo Loving Liberty uh, yesterday, the Liberty Effect with Ammon Bundy, and uh, I've got uh, a source here that uh, backs up what he said. You know what he said? He said, that with Trump being, uh, uh, getting the, uh, <laughs> my mind just blanked on me. What they just did to him, what they do? <laughs> Impeached him. Yes, not in Georgia kind of impeached did he either. But no, Donald Trump, okay, Donald Trump is impeached. Now, that doesn't mean he's convicted in the Senate, but I'll tell you what it does mean. It means that he can no longer give pardons. And as what I'd like to say about that is this war in the West, there is two great factions warring one against another. So, uh, like the Hammonds were... Uh, Victims of that, they uh, they found pardon in Trump. Uh, Ammon tells you how many he's, he's pardons he's given. You know, not very many, twenty something or thirty something, I think. But he can't do no more. So Roger Stone, uh, yeah, you're scrooged like a duck, uh, and and a lot more people. Now we get to Matt Shea up there in the uh, Pacific Northwest over in Spokane, Washington, where I spent. Uh, a few short months in the summer up there in 2017 and in Spokane. 
a wonderful place up there. I didn't know who Matt Shea was at that point, but he had already been involved down in Nevada in 2014. A lot of people I didn't know. Uh, you know, I just came as a, a person as uh, to be. Uh, I was doing internet radio, and I, I took it to come be a witness and report to it, and that I did. So here's federal pardons in the United States. It's a Wikipedia. <clears throat> it says uh, federal pardon in the United States is the action of the president of the United States that completely sets aside the punishment for a federal crime. The authority to take such uh, action is granted to the president by Article 2, Section 2, Clause 1 of the United States. Uh, the U.S. Constitution. Under the Constitution, the President's clemency powers extends to federal criminal defenses. Uh, all requests for executive uh, clemency for federal offenses are, excuse me, directed to uh, the office, excuse me, of uh, the pardon attorney in the U.S. Department of Justice for investigation and review. And the beneficiary of a pardon needs to accept the pardon. The Supreme Court stated in a verdict versus United States, the pardon, pardon carries uh, an impu, imputation of guilt, imputation, imputation of guilt, and acceptable uh, and acceptance of a pardon is a confession to the, such guilt. The, here it is, the uh, president's pardon power is limited to the federal offenses because of the Constitution and only grants the power, uh, the president, the power to pardon offenses against the United States. An offense that solely violates state law is not an offense against the uh, United States. And experts disagree as to whether presidents can pardon themselves. And there, are several, there is disagreement about how the pardon power applies in cases of impeachment. So maybe I was wrong in stating it. Maybe Ammon was, but maybe not. Be very interested. This is something further to uh, find out about. Uh, and, it, and it finishes up here. It says the pardon can also be used to for a presumptive case, such as when President Gerald Ford pardoned Nixon over any possible crimes regarding the Watergate scandal. That's in the uh, blog. You'll find it in the postcast, the radio log. Now then, uh, let me take a moment. Come over here to chat. Uh, Wanna talk? Oh. Uh, says, let's see, he says, thanks uh, Roger, yes, thank you Roger, Roger Roots, uh, he asks if, re if reversible by lawyers without prejudice is meaningless, it should be final, and uh, here is uh, some more folks here, and Judge Dredd posting on Harvard Trump, Trump, Trump not impeached until articles transferred to Senate. So is he not Trump, uh, not uh, impeached? Did the impeachment become official when they received the papers? But they they're not going to convict him. So I mean, it's all been a waste of time. But if the purpose was to of impeachment was to prevent his uh, uh, no more than to prevent him to, from having his pardoning pardoning pardon in power, <clears throat> then I would say that was a a, a mighty uh, strike and blow against that faction from the the one. Yeah, you, know, you can put all kinds of names, whatever you want to put on there. People uh, scoff at when you say deep state, but these people are there's deep people in the state that are very deep, very very deep. Back over here in the Real Liberty Media, hello folks. Uh, I see Flash and Body, Salt Lake City, Mike and Sock Puppet. I am Lone Frog, anti. That's A N T E I E. It's not like anti against it. Gubrazilla, Judge Dread. I'm just scrolling up and see who's chatting here. Grimner's in here and Donna's in here. So anyways, this is a place to come get your tail kicked if uh, if you're a mind to it. I'm going to close out the broadcast and talk a little bit. Maybe about the, all the great and the greatness of government. Governance. No, I'm not really. I might say something though. Okay, let me go back and find myself on Facebook. Let me start on the, the Twitter. Uh, there's more about um, Matt Shea and so I'm going to bypass that that's more to discuss later and here's uh, a link that I'm not getting to it's uh, domestic terrorism in 2016 analysis and 
<coughs> who did I get that from? Somebody on Twitter. I forget. I'm gonna I'm gonna close it. I'm just gonna <coughs> excuse me. Start closing some tabs out. Uh, I've got a over there in the Facebook memories today. There's a lot of stuff going on. Skip. Uh, not gonna close out my edit there. I'm working on the podcast play page. Let me just skip on down. Skim on down till I get to where. Well, that's a lot of. Uh, that's a lot, a lot of, a lot of tabs open. Uh, I believe I did share this with you. Yeah, the missed tra- trial from uh, declared Bunkerville from uh, Readout News. There's the image of the the flag from uh, Daniel Lewis Crumpton. It, it, Crumpton. It'll be in the uh, in the broadcast and the postman link there to Goodreads. And uh, we'll close that Facebook and we'll close. Um, this, which is also included in the in the blog there, the Bundy Ranch Cattle Battle, the realities of, in parentheses, extreme environmentalism uh, for your search if uh, you're just a listening somewhere else. But come back on over to Real Liberty Media. To uh, You can find me, reallibertymedia.com forward slash uh, author forward slash vine. That, that's, that's for Vinny, me. A lot of ways to say Vin E. Vincent Easley. I'm closing you two. Here's, uh, I guess I can stop right here and get to where I need to be. I do a refresh. Somebody sent me a friend with cruel ass. Let me see who that is. Okay, uh, another liberty, liberty-minded person, and I'll, I'll confirm that. In the, let me go ahead and get your notifications turned on. Maybe. So yeah, I'd like to turn on the notifications for everybody. I wish I'd turned them on from the very beginning. I probably would have blown Facebook up. <laughs> and it only works when I'm on here because there's like a, a thousand within a few hours, and uh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's convenient because it pops up when I'm here and I see what people's posting. Because I can't go to the to the main feed, <coughs> the home feed page, and uh, you know rely on what Facebook's going to feed you there. <clears throat> I'm going to have to take a minute here and scroll. Uh, get down here where our discussion is at with uh, Neil. Here, Here's a post from uh, where I say the measure of a man of a man's power is the depth of his mercy. And thank you folks. I, I mentioned y'all. And there's uh Mafud Sadani, and he's over like in uh, uh, Morocco, over that part of the world. And he tells me that uh, he must know who Christopher Moore was, because that's who I quoted. He said he was born January 1st, 1957 in Toledo, Ohio. He's an American crime fiction novel writer. He's a really good writer, Christopher Moore is. You know what? Uh, he uh, took the time to respond to me uh, two, three, four times there over on Twitter. I thought that was kind of neat, too. He's a pretty famous author. Yeah, great book. So some of the quotes, I added a couple of his quotes to the uh, RLM quote database. And then, uh, in turn, I posted those out to the Twitter feed. There's the post from uh, that I post for, uh, for Roger. And here's a... A memory I shared from a year ago. Uh, it's still not over. It matters how you stand. Free Todd Engel. Yeah, he was there for, what, 45 minutes? And uh, then he posted something on Facebook. And he's in prison now. Feliz cumpleaños a mi hermana. Grandes deseos. Julieta, happy birthday. Yes, today. Es Julieta's birthday. Muchas gracias. He says, mi hermano. Corazón, mi hermanita. And here's my post two years ago. Uh, today, a little slice of justice. That's in the uh, that's in the radio log in the blogcaster. And uh, Andrea, what a wonderful gal this is. She uh, got magic. Now, I would talk about... Uh, Maxine Bernstein. She's I sat next to her in court and just looking around at uh it, I mean she just you, you wouldn't even think she was paying attention to I mean how did she pull all the information and be able to recall it cuz she only wrote a little bit and 
as she was uh, taking her notes. I was sitting next to her one day. But, boy right here, should I say girl right here, Andre Ellison Parker, she was amazing set up in there in them first rounds of the trials and taking notes and giving reports like no other. The very best uh, reporter that I've ever seen, Andre Ellison Parker. Eric's wonderful wife. And Shauna Cox. Well, she says she misses Lisa. Andrea does. And Shauna Cox says, oh, me too. <clears throat> Another great gal right there, Shauna, that I got to know very well. Met her in 2014. I didn't know who she was until I go, you know what? I got video of, her, of an interview with her. Yeah. <clears throat> and here's, here's what I've here's what I've called today's broadcast. It's a modest proposal. Uh, waving the flag. Shout out to Daniel Lewis Crumpton. That's right. And a message to tyranny. I extended it and I turned it down. I put a sock on it. And, uh, but uh, basically it is, uh, you say you love me, but you just don't listen. To that I'd say go up yourself. Uh, let me go down, down, down. Skipping a couple here. Getting up to find the comments with uh, Neil Wampler. Thanks, uh, uh, Dorsey and Dora Macias Fernandez. Also, I've used a lot of her work. She's down in South America. Thank you for noticing over here. David Trexler, shout out to you, my friend. Now, for some reason, Facebook decides that they ought to help me. Because Lord knows what I might see. They say most most relevant is what they've got my comments selected for. And every time I've got to go along and, and click all comments. Oh, they're just trying to make life easier for me, I reckon. I don't know. Do you think? Don't want me to see bad things? Terrible things? Mm. Alright. This is my friend Neil Wampler who... I had the privilege of getting to know him in Las Vegas. And uh, we slept under the same roof more than a time or two as well. And a very big shout out to, uh, unfortunately, they've split up. But uh, um, you know how you are. Bless y'all's heart. Neil says, uh, let's not give Navarra undue credit. Her scathing uh, exploration of Myrie came after she had worked hand in glove sure did with them and to hang the Bundys she only changed her tune when her reputation was threatened she wouldn't forget the Wooten uh, oh he said we shouldn't forget the Wooten whistleblower mem memo emerging de during the trial as a damning condemnation of BLM for uh, forcing facing a disaster the, uh, for the government interest and also a personal threat. Navarro threw Myrie to the wolves and ran. She did. Somebody said something to me over here, I do believe. Uh, where? Um, boom, 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 boom. I'll find it later, I reckon. Alright, where was I? Where was I? I'm back over here. <clears throat> oh, that might have been some other kind of notice. Um... So, to listen here, um, I did read this all-to-air radio reading last night. Again, find it in the Ponder Getter pod podcast player uh, on Real Liberty Media. It's on the record, and I, I read their brief. It's about an hour and a half. So, you can either pick up the uh, the link here and read it for yourself if you'd like to uh, to listen or uh, me stumble through in places as I read it. Uh, come on along. Neil says to me, oh, uh, I'd assumed that it'd be at the Ninth Circuit. But once again, because I said I'm going to be in Vegas for this. Uh, once again, will the public be admitted? Question mark. I, I, I've got to think they will be. And I just wonder. I don't see a big in run to people getting there. But in the meantime, uh, in term between now and then, I will hope that uh, we will come together and come stand in the gap there again. And make a very, I hope hundreds come and we make a very big presence again there at the federal courthouse in Las Vegas. Um, that's uh, 
333 Fremont Street or is it 666? I think it's probably the devil's number somewhere. Las Vegas, Nevada. There is a courthouse at 666 somewhere. There's a lot of courthouses around in there. One of them had like false set of false wall uh, windows and doors and stuff. I found that very strange. Um, and I don't know. Let's see. He's, <laughs> this is funny. He says, oh, I again, he says he didn't know. It traveled like a road show. Now I know why he calls it the Ninth Circus. <laughs> Very clever. That was in response to uh, the Ninth Moves from city to city on the calendar. It's like a road show. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let me come down. Stupid more uh, Facebook. There's a lot of comments here. I've got to change from most relevant to all comments. We're going to go normal. I normally run about an hour, but uh, I'll be running over here some. Uh, it's just a little uh, the same. Uh, O'Neill says, you know as well as I do, Vince, that this, uh, this appeal is nothing but Myrie trying to save his bacon. And I hope the Ninth Circuit judges tell him exactly that when they reject his brief. I don't know that uh, Myrie's involved in this. It goes over to Elizabeth O. White, uh, who stepped in replacing him as the uh, AUSA, uh, the appointed United States Attorney. Um, I, I have more to talk about that, and that's going to require another broadcast next week on this, where I can look closer at how these law lawyers and the, so we got a lot of them. I got a lot of links, and I'm not even going to bring this. This will be next week. Uh, Trump's appointees. To uh, the circuit court, the uh, uh, <clears throat> the district courts, <clears throat> some of the uh, I, I couldn't find either. I had two people I think I had nailed down as being uh, those. It's in the blog post uh, cast here, uh, Van Dyke and uh, 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 something Sacker, Hun Sacker, I believe her name is being appointed. I think they they would be a, like favorable judges in, for the for the Bundys. Uh, uh, but I've got a longer list of names, and I'm going to do that uh, next week. Let me continue with what uh, with Neil here. Um, is that all? Oh, here's the other little flies. Let me see. Man, I don't know. Facebook is getting like uh, Twitter. It it has these little like uh, spastic jogs right when you're fixing a click. It jogs on you, and boom, you hit something else. I'd like to know what's up with that. really would. Okay. So, Neil says, see, and this might probably be out of order here, because Facebook. But what I've heard, uh, the appeal will be in the city. And he's thinking about uh, San Francisco, I think. And I don't know if the pub public will be a a admitted. And I tell him I'm not sure how it all works exactly, and uh, so I'm I'm seeking to find out more. And if he find if you all anybody finds anything, contact me. How this works? <coughs> excuse me. I I would like to know more. So if you have more information, uh, um, please yes, uh, in uh, enlighten me. Uh, so I told him I have more information today, and that's what I'm doing. He says uh, he doesn't mind. Visited in San Francisco. He was born and raised there, but accommodations might be a problem. Uh, in his last visit, uh, he said uh, his son and he had uh, camped uh, up in Marion County and, and took the Locksburg Ferry across the city. Cool ride. Yeah, sounds pretty cool for sure. So, uh, Neil, I say this will be in Vegas, Las Vegas, Nevada, March 23rd to 27th. That week they'll be uh, they'll have the calendar of. Uh, the uh, the Nevada District uh, in the Ninth Circuit there, and the uh, Court of Appeals comes and sits in there, and I I might only assume, and I'm thinking I'm pretty sure I'm right that it will be in the federal courthouse. So Neil says he just lost track. Uh, what's happening in Vegas? Well, that's right there, and I've got a link for the seditionist.com for uh, uh, they uh, a separate uh, little uh, organization that. Uh, um, puts up uh, briefs and stuff like that. So even though they're snarky, thank you for that. And here is the calendar on the uh, CDN.CA9 U.S. Courts Gov. Uh, the calendar, you can find that. And, and that's uh, that's going to bring me to uh, round this out here.
bring me back in next week. We'll pick up with the, the liars. I mean the lawyers. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay, let me see here. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I think I've got her all. <clears throat> I've covered it. Uh, I intend to have covered today. Hey, there's Brian Hyde posting. Another great man. Uh, Healing Field Colossal Flag Foundation is his post. And I'm going to go over here and give a stop this recording as I close out. It's reallibertymedia.com. I'm Vincent Easley. I was uh, on the witness list for the Bundys in 2017-18 uh, in at uh, number 303. I was at the Bundy Ranch in 2014 uh, for the... Uh, the day before, the day of, and uh, many days into weeks uh, later, through the next couple of months, at the uh, out there in in uh, the Virgin River Valley, what they call the Bundy Ranch Standoff. Um, I I went to Las Vegas in 2017-2018 to report on uh, that that case and uh, uh, some other stuff I did uh, as far as uh, going. To Utah and to uh, Lompoc and uh, to Denver for Bruce Doucette's trial uh, and, and many other things. And the people that I met are, are I, I feel like uh, um, I'm a peanut in a row of Snickers. These are great money folks that come, right, most of them just normal old folks, come and step up. Uh, this is Freakers Friday. Come at 10 p.m. Central tonight, the Freakers Ball, or Balls to the Walls. But anyways, it's free. <clears throat> and it's spelled the same way, Freakers, free, F R W E, the free. And tomorrow, I think uh, there might be a dork table, and Sunday's a big day here. We've got, uh, to warm up here, we've got some f fast fingered fun if you're into trivia. Uh, from, uh, uh, I'm going to go to Eastern Times from noon to 3 o'clock. We've got some blues playing with Grimner. He's our curator right here at Real Liberty Media. And we're playing some trivia. So, yeah, come on along. you got no lag time in your computer and fast fingers. You can get in and uh, win some fun. This is, yeah, be a winner. And uh, how Anthony comes. It's, uh, if you're out there on the left coast in the Pacific side of the country at noon there or 3 o'clock Eastern, we've got Hal Anthony coming from behind the woodshed. A uh, big influence in my life. And I, I think uh, the most uh, underappreciated man there is in, uh, uh, among the wisest of wise. You know, Hal Anthony, uh, great appreciation to this man right here. Monday, we come back for Grim Leftovers at uh, uh, 7, p.m. 7 p.m. Eastern. Grimner's coming back with some yum-yum fun and talk about some of the leftover news. Tuesday's in a, uh, in a perfect world. No longer uh, contrasting the occupation with me. Yes, the uh, uh, flash somebody broke up with me again. So, uh, yeah, to that. Anyways. I, w I was going to come kick this around some and that and something else, but I think I won't. I think I'll leave the, that uh, dog lying on the side of the road. Um, <clears throat> and that's about as, as snarky as I think I'll get about that. Uh, Wednesday, we have Miss Lonnie Clark for the Age of Fishing. She's a friend of mine. She's a liberal. Uh, but you know what she's covering? It, it crosses any political bounds. It's the Age of Fishing. It's the terribleness of what the nuclear industry is doing to not only this world but specifically to you and me so i mean if if you don't uh, like yourself maybe you like the world and want to hear what's going to happen and is happening to it lonnie clark right here at uh noon eastern on wednesdays come listen in i'm uh brother here it's a producer for her. i'm here in the background helping any way i can and grimner Stepped up and done mighty deeds like he is always the doing. That's why we call him the Big Papa. I call him the Big Papa. I don't know. I tried to get him uh, extra number in there and call him Big Papa uh, <laughs> Sweet Cheeks, but it didn't catch on. <laughs> He's so lovable. <laughs> Back to Thursdays is Poopster in Prince. Uh, 11 p.m. Eastern, the Power Hour. Cryptocurrency and... Uh, um, other things that uh, sometimes I don't have any interest in. Then we've got uh, Friday right back here. I'll see y'all next week. Noon o'clock. It's uh, noon central. 
It's a time and location with me, Vinny, Vincent Easley, your host, the Ponder Gander at What Matters Worldwide. Thanks, folks. Let me put a finger in this thing here and stop it. See you next week.